Hey everyone, so aperture is one of the most important elements of photography and most beginner photographers struggle with understanding how to really use it to their advantage. Today I'm excited to dive into the world of aperture and how you can use it in your portrait photography. We're gonna explore how aperture physically operates within the lens and how it's controlled by your camera. And more importantly, I'm gonna guide you through using aperture creatively to achieve various photographic effects, whether you want to blur out the background for that dreamy depth field, you wanna capture sharper images, or you wanna keep everything in the photo sharp, at the same time. So let's get started and unlock the potential of aperture in your photography. While shutter speed is a fairly easy thing to understand because we're all familiar with fractions of time, right? Minutes are fractions of an hour, when 60th seconds are fractions of minutes, then it's relatable because we use time every day. Aperture on the other hand is a little bit more complicated. So what is aperture? Aperture is one of the three main settings on your camera that you can use to control how bright or dark your image is along with your ISO and your shutter speed. Some may argue it is the most creative of the three because it allows you to drastically change the look of your photos. I believe that it just really depends on what kind of photography you do. For instance, if you're shooting landscapes and you want blurred movement from people, cars, buses, or even rivers to give a creamy blurred look while the subject is in focus, then shutter be speed would be your best friend. But we'll talk a little bit about that um, here just in a little bit. So first, let's talk about lens design. So Aperture is the hole in your camera that lets light through into your sensor. And it works just like the iris in your eye, where the iris opens or closes to allow more or less light into your eye. You may have noticed that if you're in a lit room and the lights suddenly turn off, you can't see anything. And then over the next 30, 45 seconds or a minute, your eyes start to adjust and you can slowly see little bits of light. This is your pupil, this little black dot in the middle, opening to let more or less light in. The pupil of your eye would be the equivalent of the aperture in your lens. And you'll see here that as the opening opens or closes, it affects how much light can get into your camera, thus how bright or dark your image will be. Aperture sizes are denoted with an f-stop number, and the bigger the number, the smaller the aperture. What we're seeing here is a list of standard aperture sizes, ranging from a fairly wide f2.8 to a fairly small f16. You may notice that the smaller the number, the bigger the opening, thus letting more light in. If it seems backwards to you, it's because you can think of f-stop as a fraction, while f4 or 1 4th is small, f16 or 1 16th is even smaller. So it's gonna reduce the light by even more. What you can't tell by looking at the numbers or at the size of the openings for that matter, is that these apertures are each one stop apart, that is, each smaller aperture lets in half as much light as the previous aperture. Back in the day, cameras would only allow you to increase or decrease by one full stop. But today, modern digital cameras allow you to decrease your aperture by one third of a stop of light versus full stops. Now, let's talk about the depth of field bit. Wider apertures give you a shallower depth of field. So in this chart, the wide open f2.8 aperture will have very shallow depth of field, while the narrow f16 aperture will have very deep depth of field. In portrait photography, you may want to have your subject in focus and your background blurred. For this, you need to choose a larger aperture, which means a smaller f-stop number. If I'm in the studio, I'm using off-camera flash instead of just the ambient light that naturally occurs, and I want the background in focus, I'm gonna use a higher f-stop number, which is gonna let less light in, but have a deeper depth of field, because I want everything in focus. Usually I'll use about f8, typically, and then control the brightness of the image with the strobes that I have around in the studio. On the other hand, if I'm shooting a landscape and want very deep depth of field, I will choose a smaller aperture, which means a larger F number. Something in the range of maybe like F11 to F22, depending on the amount of light available and how much I can compensate using my ISO and my shutter speed. If you guys wanna understand how each of these are related, ISO, shutter speed, and aperture, check out this video where I talk about how the exposure triangle works and how you can use ISO, shutter speed, and aperture all together to create the images that you want. So to give you an idea of what, how aperture affects your image, I'm on my 70 to 200 again. I've got it at f2.8, so my aperture is wide open on this lens. I'm gonna take a shot, and you can see here, some really good depth of field here, right? The trees only a foot or two behind these leaves right here are just completely not visible. I'm gonna increase my aperture to about F8, right? And you can see that my shutter speed compensates automatically. Um, I'm gonna turn my ISO up a little bit though because I don't want the shutter speed to drop too low. But to give you an idea of what the aperture will do, take another shot. As you can see, the leaves behind that leaf are a little bit more visible, right? So the depth of field has 
increased a little bit more. I'm gonna raise my aperture again. Only gonna raise my ISO so my shutter speed doesn't have to be too low. Take another shot and you can see pretty much everything is in focus, right? And so changing the aperture really makes a difference as far as how much depth of field there is, right? If I go all the way back down, F 2.8, you'll see again, all that creamy bokeh back there uh, in the depth of field has uh, again decreased. Thirdly, your aperture setting controls how sharp your lens is. Most lenses are sharper when they're stopped down, meaning a bigger f-stop number like f16, because the center of the lens are sharper than the edges. So by making the smaller aperture, you can improve the sharpness of your image. Many lenses will be sharper when they're stopped down, say to like f8 compared to where they are shot, you know, wide open at f2.8, f3.5, and you really open up your maximum aperture. So this is important to think about because if you want to shoot with really maximum aperture. Let's say for instance, you're like, I really want to blur the background. I want to shoot at F, you know, 2.8 or F 3.2 to get, to get a really blurry background. Then you may want to get a lens that goes down to maybe F 2, 1.8 so that you don't have to shoot wide open and your images will be tack sharp. So in addition to using a wider aperture for a blurry background, there are a number of other things that you can do as well. For instance, if you get closer to your subject, that's gonna thin the depth of field, making the background even blurrier. Second, make sure that the background is farther away from your subject. So oftentimes when you're you know, doing portrait photography, we want to put our subject against a wall or directly on a specific background. Instead, why not try pulling your subject off the wall a few feet at the same time with a wide aperture um, that's going to give the background space so that that's less in focus than if they were right up on the subject. Third, consider whether you need everything in focus. If so, use a small aperture like f8 or f9 to achieve a deep depth of field and include elements from the surroundings in your image. You may want, you know, the leaves or the brush, wherever you're shooting to also be in focus. Something you guys can try if you want to try out using different aperture settings to get a feel for how it can change your images. You may consider shooting an aperture priority mode or AV mode on your camera. This means that you can set your aperture setting in your camera and then your camera will automatically adjust the shutter speed and the ISO to give you a proper exposure. So if I want to shoot all my images at f2.8 and not worry about the shutter speed or ISO to make sure my photos are the correct brightness, then the camera will handle all that for me. Additionally, if you'd like to learn more about how to shoot better images, check out some of my other videos that explore how shutter speed and ISO affect your overall exposure, composition, off-camera flash, and all things photography. Um, I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching. I don't even know why I'm looking shocked. Like, your boy...